ready to go here at the Mine Shaft in Charlotte. The name is Belt Gymnasium, but nobody around here calls it that. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. For the Buccaneers, rated 10th right in the country, coming in. Talford, Story in the forecourt. Jones at center, Gear and Keith, Mr. Jennings, leading the parade in the backcourt. And the, the coach for East Tennessee State, in his first year as the head coach, surrounded by his team, Alan LaForge. He was an assistant to Les Robinson who moved on this year to NC State. For the 49ers of UNC Charlotte, their starting lineup, a very young one indeed. And one of the key weapons will be Henry Williams in the backcourt. Of course, Jarvis Lang will be one we'll be watching number 23 as well. And their head coach, Jeff Mullins, an All-American at Duke. He, too, surrounded by his team. And he had a distinguished career of a dozen years in the NBA and won an NBA championship with the Golden State Warriors. And all the hype is over, Greg. The excitement is going to be here all night, but we're ready to see a young UNC Charlotte team with nothing to lose going against the powerhouse in East Tennessee State. Yeah, and when you look at East Tennessee State, they've won 21 of their last 23 games. They're eighth in the nation right now, although they do lose last week to Furman. Very impressive scoring average of 93 points a game. UNC Charlotte, 13-9 on the year, 5-5 five and five in the Sun Belt, coming off a big win for them at the Charlotte Coliseum on Thursday night against Western Kentucky. These Tennessee State Buccaneers have a small contingent of fans here from Johnson City. There's Alan LaForce, uh, close up of him. The Buccaneers in their road blue with royal gold trimming. And the 49ers of UNC Charlotte in the white with the green and gold. Jumping center, it'll be Calvin Talbert for East Tennessee State. And he goes against Jarvis Lang and Boley, the center controls for UNC Charlotte, run away. This is Rashawn Thompson in the backcourt. And he's being guarded by Keith Jennings. That's a critical matchup. Henry Williams had the ball for a moment. Thompson inside. Lang. He gets off early. Look out. And there you get to see the strength of Lang inside in the post. He's very, very tough. And he'll also draw fouls. He spends a great deal of time at the free throw line. There's number 22 in blue and gold, Keith Mr. Jennings, all five, seven of them. Watch him tonight. We expect East Tennessee State and the person, the person of Mr. Jennings not to be shy launching it from three-point land either. Jennings draws a foul. It puts a lot of pressure on Bershawn Thompson because you have to come up on Jennings and take the three-point shot away. He's one of the best, in fact, the best three-point shooter in the country. He also has the quickness when you do come up to guard him and take that three away of going right around you. So for Sean Thompson, obviously, has his work cut out. Jennings was fouled trying for the assist there, Greg, and he has 232 assists coming into this game. Shot from the perimeter is no good by Calvin Talford. Shot him in the rebound. 49ers want to run. Thompson. This is Williams. Into the post. That's Malru Dutton, number three, touching the ball for the first time. Tell you right away, UNC Charlotte showing that they're willing to be patient and go for a good shot. They're not throwing up the first three-pointer that comes their way. Dutton with a big effort on the board, still controls. He got two rebounds after missed shots, and Lang is fouled going to the hoop. Lang in their game a couple of nights ago against Western Kentucky shot 16 free throws, May 12. Here's a player as he snakes along the baseline, going up with a little lefty off the glass. Very, very capable of drawing fouls, as I said a moment ago. Jarvis Lang, he's a freshman from Farmville, North Carolina. He's one of 13 children, so no wonder he is competitive on the board. He had to be competitive all his life, and there was the block on Dotton, but now Lang will shoot too. His sister is on scholarship at Western Kentucky as a basketball player, Jarvis Lang. Good bloodline. Mm. And after we talked him up, of course, he missed the foul. <laughs> Lang is a 72.8% free throw shooter. Gets one out of two, and Charlotte's on the board, three zip. Now here comes full court pressure by UNC Charlotte. Look for it after every made free throw by UNC Charlotte. And it's going to be a key how the referees call the game. They call the foul, the second foul of the game, on Charlotte for Sean Thompson, I believe, has his second. Now, of course, we talked with Alan LaForce, East Tennessee State's coach, and, coach, and he says, no, I don't want to run with him. And I don't think that he fears that he can't. It's just that he doesn't want this crowd to really, really take over this game. And in an up-and-down affair, the crowd can very much be involved, and that always favors the home team. For Sean Johnson, his second foul takes a seat. Delano Thompson, rather, Delano Johnson comes in off the Charlotte bench. And again, full court pressure. All in an effort to turn the pace up if you're UNC Charlotte. 
Charlotte very good at forcing turnovers. They force about 24 a game on average. That's pretty good. Already, Charlotte has made a change. Delano Johnson now is guarding Mr. Jennings. And Jennings cannot get any room to get a shot off. Jennings thought about the three. Now he'll pick it up just inside three-point land, and it's good. 3-2. So Mr. Jennings is on the board, and here's Delano Johnson. Charlotte going to put a lot of pressure both ends of the court. Lang just throws up a wild shot, and he draws the foul. They have not figured out how they're going to guard Lang yet. Now, he's shown a couple of different looks. He's posted up. This time, he comes out on the perimeter, gets the basketball, puts it on the floor, and tries to create for himself. And each time, he's been able to draw fouls from East Tennessee State. Calvin Talford, the guilty party that time as Jeff Mullins looks on. And Jarvis Lang back to the free throw line. Lang, a 72% free throw shooter. You know, which really isn't bad for a freshman because usually, you know, for a lot of people say, and I agree, that free throw shooting is mostly rhythm and concentration. Freshmen, when they come in, they're not the greatest concentrators in the world. That's something you develop later on. See, Jarvis Lang saved some of his biggest efforts for the best competition, like Duke and Syracuse. If you see some shadows on the court, don't adjust your set. They had to move portable lighting in here to make it uh, bright enough for television as Rodney English makes his first appearance of the night for East Tennessee. You talked to some of the players before the game about that lighting, and I guess a few of them said that... Uh, only in the corners will it have an effect on tonight's shooting. Yeah, shots from the baseline. Lang again goes one out of two, so it's Charlotte up 4-2. Mr. Jennings running the show for the Buccaneers. Almost got away with the carry. Goes to the baseline, and he tried to hit Marty Story, but Story was defended well, and Charlotte comes up with his ball. Delano Johnson, a little showboating. Jennings is on him. Bounce pass knocked away, Charlotte ball. The officials tonight from the Atlantic Coast Conference. I'm watching players from both teams right now go up and down the court. And, Tom, it looks like it's a bit slippery out there. Uh, several players are losing their footing. I know there's no condensation built up on the floor, so maybe it's dusty. And it's very dark in that corner where the ball is inbounded there. Johnson to the hole, and he is blocked by Rodney English. A great effort, and East Tennessee comes over the ball. Well, Rodney English, along with Calvin Talford, Two of the better leapers on the East Tennessee State team. I mean, if you go in against these guys, you better go strong. Don't bring the weak stuff in. Wow, Rodney English almost jumped out of this building, and I'm not really exaggerating in this building. You're right, with this <laughs> low ceiling. <laughs> we are tied at four. East Tennessee State looking for its first lead. This is Pelfrey. Gets by Boldy, puts it up, and it counts, and he is fouled. Oh, now, Pelfrey, that's key for him, because they say he usually goes as he starts. And uh, if that's true tonight, then he could be in for a big game. Nice move, nice concentration after he was fouled and was able to get it off the glass. Just Pelfrey putting it down, going to his left. Jerry Pelfrey, his brother John, plays at Kentucky. Pelfrey, a good three-point shooter, 42 lines from there. And he's a good foul shooter, 75%. And East Tennessee State has its first lead at 6-4. They get 7-4. Now a little pressure employed by East Tennessee State. Johnson tries to run the ball up in a hurry. Now has to back off with Jennings in his face. Now Alan LaForce told us if his team could survive the opening five or ten minutes and still be in the game, he felt pretty confident. On the baseline and called for traveling is Mr. Williams. You know, you get the sense that both teams may be just a little bit jittery at this point. A lot of mistakes, turnovers in the early going. And there is some debris on the floor. The officials have already cautioned the fans behind the basket where Mr. Jennings is inbounding. We have a wild crowd here tonight. We want to keep things under control. Midnight madness indeed. They've been waiting for this game for weeks here on the campus of UNC Charlotte. Well, we got here about 9 o'clock and the line was already starting to form outside for people that probably won't even get in. Rodney English foul as he... Tries to lay one in off the glass. The veteran Lenny Wirtz makes the call, and English will go to the line for two shots. Well, Charlotte, after getting off to a 3-0 lead, East Tennessee State has outscored the 49ers 7-1. Coming in for the Buccaneers, Eric Palmer. He'll come in at the next horn. 
and usually comes in to spell Mr., but only briefly. We talked to Alan LaForce. He says, hey, I really don't like playing Mr. as long as I have to, but we don't have a lot of depth at the point guard spot, so maybe I can spell him just for a moment as you see Mr. heading out right now. Well, Jennings heads out at 5'7", and Palmer at 5'6", replaces him. <laughs> you don't see that too often in this day and age. I'm telling you. English is good on the foul shot, and we have we have a timeout. No, we have a substitution coming in for Charlotte. Daryl Duvall makes his first appearance of the game. He'll replace Boldy at center. Both coaches say that they will play eight, nine, perhaps ten players. And uh, that's not really surprising when you consider the pace that these teams play at. They like to keep fresh players on the floor. Lang missed the baseline jumper, and eventually East Tennessee State's Rodney English with a rebound. Jarvis Lang's got all the points for Charlotte. East Tennessee State, more well-rounded in the scoring so far, 8-4 leader. Now, when we watched them practice last night, we noticed that East Tennessee State was using patience in their half court. I mean, they were really, really making a conscious effort to turn down the first shot. If it was early on the shot clock, they wanted to make UNC Charlotte play some defense and wear them out, hopefully. Palmer's jumper coming off the pick, no good, and this is Delano Johnson. Up court to Dotton, a tough pass, but Dotton controls it and blows the layup. Johnson puts it in. Johnson there to clean up. But you know, on Dotton's play, the toughest part was the catch. The layup was the easiest part. He blew the layup. <laughs> Fortunately, one of his teammates there to help him out. Three-pointer is good. That's Major Gear. First time we called his name tonight. Won't be the last. No, Major Gear, a good shooter who's not shooting very well on the season, 37%. Hopefully, I know in his mind, that shot can get him into some type of positive rhythm. Malru Dutton is good as gold from just left of the foul line. <laughs> That's the way to quickly atone for a missed layup a moment ago. You come out and pop the 15-footer, huh? Yep. Left him wide open. He said, you're going to leave me open. I'm going to take it. And he made no mistake. Down the lane, English loses control. Did not travel. The jumper off the rim. The shot was taken by Marty Story and a foul on the rebound. Well, there's 15-20 left to go in the first half, and they love it in Charlotte. And East Tennessee State is ahead. The Buccaneers lead it 11-8. to well, you can see that a small contingent of Buccaneer fans have made the trek from Johnson City. They're very supportive of their basketball team, and I don't think they have to worry about an NCAA tournament bid. Shouldn't. No. But <laughs> we'll caution that stranger things have happened, but I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, uh, their record is outstanding. One of the best in the country. Has some quality wins on the road and at home. However, you can bet your last nickel they want to come up with a big one tonight. And here's the steal by Mr. Jennings. Trying to catch up to it is English. Can he do it without traveling? He did. Great body control. But the steal, the quick hands by Mr. Jennings that time. And taking it to the hole and calls for the offensive foul. Giving it right back is Marty Story. You know, again, when you talk about Jennings, here's a five foot seven player who not only averages almost 20 points a game and nine assists, but hey, chips in with four rebounds and three assists. Never mind the fact that he's shooting 64% from three-point territory. I mean, this guy's phenomenal. And I'll tell you, he's someone that the average guy can relate to at 5'7". <laughs> <laughs> I find him very refreshing. Okay. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> the ball pass almost intercepted. Controlled by Bannister is in the game. Three-point shot. Good. That's, James Terrell. That's Terrell. And listen, they call him Trigger because he's not bashful when he gets the ball he will shoot it really works to get himself open for sean thompson back in the game with his two fouls mr jennings dishes off with a three-point shot to an air ball and here comes charlotte that air ball was by alvin west and he couldn't miss in the uh shoot around today jarvis lang lays it in and charlotte has reclaimed the lead they really put a lot of pressure on you defensively the 49ers back up the court east tennessee state it is good but it's called which way? Lenny Wirtz. I thought he called an offensive foul. I believe he did. Yes. But does the basket count? We'll see that the ball is out of his hands before the shot, before the, the foul, the contact is, but they wave the basket off. Good defensive play. Good defensive positioning by UNC Charlotte. Delano Johnson wanted to come into the game. He was gesturing feverishly to get in the game. The 
Whistle sound of the inbound, and now the officials recognize they made a mistake, and Johnson will be able to come in. Well, I'll tell you, East Tennessee State very, very aggressive going to the basket in this game. So far, it's cost them. Well, this is this goes back to what Alan LaForce was saying. He says, hey, we'll take opportunity fast breaks as you look at the field goal shooting there, four of nine East Tennessee, almost even in that department, 50% shooting by UNC State. But LaForce is saying, hey, we, we're hopeful that we're smart enough to realize that if we do not have the break, if we do not have numbers, we'll pull it out and be patient. Delano Johnson works against Mr. Jennings. Flying top of the key. This is Terrell. Couldn't shoot at that time. He was guarded. Yeah, the trigger. Here's the ball. Gets a nice pass. Reclaims it, and we're going to have a jump ball call. And the possession arrow pointing in the direction of East Tennessee State. Good defense that time inside. Rodney English put a body on him. Here comes the full court pressure. UNC Charlotte. Delfran Jennings get away from it. Now the 49ers drop back. East Tennessee State doing what they said they would do. They, they will run, but they don't want to. They'd rather have Jennings control the tempo. Look at the body movement and the kick out, but unfortunately for the Buccaneers, Alvin West zig when he should have zagged. And right away, Keith Jennings motions to West. Hey, stay where you are. You spotted up well. I'll find you. More substitutions coming in for Jeff Mullins. Cedric Broadhurst coming in for his first action of the night. Here's Jennings on the penetration. Now West, his man has already come over to help. You see Terrell, he's already coming over to help on Jennings. Back to live action. Loose ball in the backcourt. Terrell goes back and gets it, and they'll let him take it because the Buccaneers touched it at midcourt. East Tennessee State really up denying the passing lane. And Alvin West has called for the foul. A little too aggressive that time. Yeah, he got a hand on that last ball, chased it down, but was unable to recover. And I think I'm just a little bit anxious defensively that time when he picked up the foul, reaching in. Major Gear comes back in for East Tennessee State. And getting set to come in for Charlotte. Starting center will be Jack Foley. And also coming back in is Malu Dotton. So a lot of a lot of fresh people being shuttled in off the benches tonight by both coaches. Again, not unusual when you try to play the up tempo. And you know, we, we talked to Jeff Mullins yesterday. He says, hey, we want to run. We want a game in the 90s, maybe the hundreds. They're certainly capable of getting there, averaging 91 points on the season as uh, UNC Charlotte. Johnson drives. Mr. Jennings with a partial block. Do you believe that? He really got up in the air. The pass underneath. For the layup and it's intercepted. It was intended for Rodney English. Never got there. Here comes Charlotte. Now Rude Dutton, and they're going to call a foul before the shot. The foul is going to be on Jennings. Wait a minute. Cedric Broadhurst. They're going to call it the other way on Charlotte on Broadhurst. Broadhurst taking it in the middle on the break. And you see Jennings stepping in there smartly to grab the offensive charge. I mean, he's always thinking on the floor. You really got to be impressed with this 5'7 dynamo. 12-11 the score in a few minutes since we had some points put on the board. Charlotte by one. Tom Mees with Greg Kelser. Live from Charlotte. Here's Pelfrey again. Dot with a rebound. Good cut and pass that time. Just couldn't get the basket. But, you know, East Tennessee State is a good three-point shooting team, but they haven't had many attempts because UNC Charlotte really prides itself on recovering defensively and getting out to contest the three. Doing a great job in that area. Cedric Broaders with a baseline jumper, and Mr. Jennings answers right back. Boy, Pelfrey got away with some murder there in the backcourt. Good defensive pressure, but he was reaching in. Leno Johnson gets a pick from Dunn. Man-to-man -to -man defense by East Tennessee State. The trigger fires again, shoots the blank that time, and English with a rebound. Pelfrey, three-pointer. He slipped on his landing on the way down, but the rebound is up and in for the Buccaneers. Major gear. Oh, there's a steal almost by Pelfrey in the backcourt. Leno Johnson almost lost it. Broadhurst won't get the bounce off the iron. Here's Bowley for the lay-in. Look what I found. 
and he may have been fouled, though it wasn't called that time by Keith Jennings. Moley breaks the pressure, and here comes Jennings, all by his lonesome. He's open. He likes that three-pointer. And again, the ball goes off the hands, this time of Major Deer. I tell you, well, I want to want to have an idea about why we're seeing so many turnovers when we come back from commercial. 10.52 left in the first half. We got a barn burner at the mine shaft. Back in a moment. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Creative Sports Marketing in association with ESPN and a used for broadcast or other transmission of this telecast without the written consent of Creative Sports Marketing and ESPN is prohibited. We're seeing a lot of turnovers, Greg, and I think there's two reasons. Just a very hot building, some perspiration, but you picked up something else. Well, I think, again, the perspiration, the slickness of the ball has a lot to do with some of the turnovers, but I honestly think the floor is a little bit slippery, too. Players are continuing to slip and slide on this surface. UNC Charlotte with a one-point lead, 16-15, to 15, and Boldy will inbound as we get back to action here on ESPN. Midnight Madness from the mineshaft in Charlotte. Almost a turnover, but a nice job controlling by Rashawn Thompson. UNC Charlotte is doing a good job of handling full court pressure from East Tennessee State, but barely. I mean, they've come close to a couple of turnovers. Henry Williams tries to get off with a jumper and does so. We really haven't seen him do much since the first moment of the game. Well, as I said, he's an unselfish player, is not going to force shots. Though that time he, he went against pressure, but Williams, a very smart player, he will let the offense come to him. English tries to get the pass over to Story, and Story is fouled from behind by Lang. Very aggressive defense by Jeff Mullins. Actually, both teams, they're really up playing the passing lanes, trying to make every single touch and every single catch difficult for the opponent. That's Alan LaForce. First-year head coach at East Tennessee State was an assistant under Les Robinson there. And on the inbound pass, another Buccaneer turnover. You know, defense and turnovers are dictating tempo right now. You know, you got two teams both average in the 90s, but at the rate we're going, you know, we will be in the 60s. Thompson, double pump off the front rim. Jennings for the rebound. You're right. East Tennessee State, the eighth-leading scoring team of the country at over 93 points a game. UNC Charlotte around 90 points a game. But they better start heating up if they want to reach that tonight. Oh, absolutely. Here again, patience in the half-court set by East Tennessee State. A little Lenny Wirtz. The excellent ACC official had to get out of the way of that ball. Jennings with it down the lane. Has it slapped away. Comes up with it. Gets it off to a teammate. That's gear and back to Jennings, and it's taken away. Here's Williams. Three on two for Charlotte. Behind the back, and he's out of control. Absolutely out of control. Hey, he carried it. He traveled with it. I mean, he could have, you can give him any number of calls that time. He's a little upset about it, but I think he's really frustrated with himself, Williams. Trying to put a little French pastry, a very good steal, quick hands against Mr. Jennings, but then here he is behind the back, double dribble travel. You call it. It's a turnover. Yep. Henry, and I think Jeff Mullins, uh, he looked over at Coach as if to say, did I do it? And Coach said, just, just, just pass the ball next time. Stay, stay basic. Yeah. Well, they've warned the home crowd now that a technical foul will be called if any more debris is thrown on the court. Apparently, some people disagreeing with that call threw some trash on the floor. You know, oftentimes when you're at home and enthusiasm and excitement is flying high, players try to do a little bit more, add a little fanciness to it to turn the crowd on, and oftentimes it ends up getting you in trouble. Jennings does not have the eye tonight from three-point land. Peltry came down with a good rebound, however, and he draws the foul from Dutton. And that is the sixth-team foul. Break that the seventh-team foul now on UNC Charlotte. So Peltry goes for the one-and-one. One. East Tennessee State with still a couple of fouls to give. UNCC is in the one-and-one, and just a couple of fouls away from the automatic two. The ball comes in, Bowley, starting center sits down, but the truth be known, Darrell DeVall usually winds up with more minutes than Bowley. Bowley, of course, is just one of those guys who's willing to do whatever you ask. I mean, he'll dive on the floor, he'll take charges, but he's not much of an offensive threat, whereas DeVall is. He's a player that has to be respected on the offensive end of the floor. Pelfrey hits the first end of the one and one 
He's a 75.1% foul shooter. He makes this one. The Buccaneers will be within one. In and out. So it's Charlotte by two. The ball, the rebound. Well, look at Jennings uh, deny the ball to Thompson. Thompson's really got to work just to get the ball. Three-point shot. Williams is starting to heat up. And when you gamble, there's always going to be someone open. That time, Bershawn Thompson did a great job of finding Williams open for the shot. And he's very deadly when you leave him wide open from three. Charlotte by five now. Their biggest lead of the game. Pelfrey, two-point shot. No good. Rebound. Charlotte. Dutton. And here comes Williams again. And this time he will draw the foul. And Mr. Jennings is called for it. What? <laughs> Williams is taking a beating going in on the fast break. Now this is the second time he's been bumped. Although I think he almost got away with the travel. I'll tell you, Pelfrey nailed him a second time, but he didn't get called for the foul. Hey, they're making him pay for it going in there. <laughs> I got a feeling though, Williams is tough. He'll keep going in time after time after time. You don't average 22 points a game and not be tough. See how many fouls it is on Mr. Jennings. I think that's his second. We'll check on that. Williams will go to the line for two as Dotton sits down. Henry Williams, the leading scorer in the Sun Belt Conference, and last year he had 84 three point baskets. You know, a lot of people we were talking to in and around the Charlotte area were wondering hey, East Tennessee State, the number eight team in one poll, maybe 10 in another poll, but one of the top teams in the country coming in, hey, and this young 49er team, you know, will this be much of a game? And you and I both agreed that with this floor and this crowd yep. and the excitement that it could be a very, very good game. And it seems as though right now UNC Charlotte is responding to that with their six-point lead. And Williams trying to make it seven. Whenever you have a young team with an emotional home court crowd behind them, if they ever put it all together as a team, look out. Yes, indeed. East Tennessee State with a job to do now, trailing by seven, the 10th-ranked Buccaneers. You know, UNC Charlotte really is doing a good job of taking away all the strength of East Tennessee State. I mean, they're out on the three-point shooters. They're taking the fast break away, and I think it's causing some, some, some concern, certainly on the sideline now for Allen LaForce. Well, the seventh team foul now at East Tennessee State. We saw Mr. Jennings miss the three-point shot. He's not had the outside eye tonight. There's no question about that. And Williams goes to the line again, this time shooting one and one. And English gets set to come back in for Alan LaForce. 8.23 to go in the half. 24 to 16, Charlotte. You can tell Alan LaForce just trying to push the right button to find the right combination, the right chemistry out there on the floor right now with all the substitution. Williams makes them both, and it's a 9-point 49er lead. I know the folks who made the trip from Johnson City and those watching back in East Tennessee did not expect to fall down by this much. And I know a lot of people expected a tough game, but East Tennessee didn't think they were going to be in for a game. They know it now, and as I say that, underneath in the lead is 7, Alvin West for the lead. Good pass from Pelfrey and West on the back cut along the baseline. That's something they've got to have a little bit more of, a little bit more movement in their passing game. East Tennessee State. Answering right back is Darrell Duvall with a short baseline jumper. 27 to 18. You know, when you have a passing game, it doesn't call for a lot of screens on the basketball, but I think in order to get Jennings open today, tonight, I should say, <laughs> or this morning, whatever yes. it is, they're going to have to probably start screening when he has the basketball to break him free. That's a big shot for a state by Calvin Talford. Three-pointer is good, and the lead is down to six. Talford can really line it up when he gets going, too. Yes, indeed. Somewhat overshadowed is Talford because of Jennings' tremendous success. Here's English. He's Tennessee two-on-one. This is Talford. He's fouled well before the shot. Yeah. He's solid, though. He's very solid. Perhaps the best athlete on this East Tennessee State team. Seven minutes, 11 seconds to go here in the first half. It's East Tennessee State trailing UNC Charlotte by 627 to 21, and Talford will be shooting one and one. 
You want to talk about the versatility and athletic ability of Calvert? How about all state and high school baseball, basketball, football, and track? An all-around athlete. Cool. Jennings sits down, and Eric Palmer, you saw a moment ago, come in for him. A very hot building, and we've already seen both coaches going to rely heavily on their benches tonight. No air conditioning in here. Talford misses the front end, and Charlotte with the board. Slippery conditions on the floor tonight, too. They just waxed it this morning. Lang, two-point shot. Rebound, he's up and in, and it's Darrell DeVall. DeVall. East Tennessee State did a poor job of blocking out that time. You know, when you have these young leapers inside, you've got to put a body on them where they can get a, a bunch of offensive rebounds. In fact, UNC Charlotte averages 20 offensive rebounds per game. Lying underneath, in and out, but a whistle on the foul, an offensive foul on Lang. <laughs> Lang ran right over Eric Palmer that time, and I, I got to give Eric Palmer a badge for, cu for courage right there because he's a small guy. He stood in there and took that knock. He took one for the team. But the team in front, UNC Charlotte, bidding for the upset tonight. 49ers lead it 29 to 21. We'll be back in a moment. I'm Charlie Steiner. Al Bernstein will be there to call it. And you take a look at part of the capacity crowd. They can't fit another person in this building over 3,200. That's right, I said 3,200. And we're full. We're in the mine shaft. The field goal percentage, actually pretty close. Williams leading the way for Charlotte with nine points. Uncharacteristic, though, of East Tennessee State. This is a team that shoots right around 50% as a team. So they've got to turn it on if they're getting anywhere near that number. They, they, they start, though, really impressively with that shot that time by West. Excuse me, Gear. Major Gear with the seventh point of the game. He must have heard you. And East Tennessee State back within six at 29-23. Boy, Gear has come off the bench and, and done a good job for East Tennessee State. Delano Johnson may have gotten away with a double dribble there. The ball has it blocked, and they're going to score the goal. Goaltending on East Tennessee State. Well, English, I mean, it looks good, but uh, not a real smart play because I'm, I'm sure that ball was going to be short. English coming over to help out. And on the ball is Palmer. Mr. Jennings is resting on the East Tennessee State bench. And, a whistle underneath. and his rest is about to end because he's already up and ready to check in Jennings. This is a different team when Jennings is out of the game. That is the 10th team foul on UNCC. So it'll be two shots for Rodney English. This is a rule that they put into college basketball this year, Greg. One and one on the foul, seven, eight, nine. And after that, it's two shots, hoping to speed up the game a little bit. But I really haven't seen it have that effect this year. Well, not only was that rule inserted to speed up the game, but a few years ago, they brought in the possession arrow. We talked about it today. Two rules I'd like to see taken out. First of all, I hate to see a, a team penalized near the end of a game when they're playing tough defense. They get a held ball, and the possession arrow gives it right back to the team that had it initially. And then, of course, I always thought that the one-in-one -one situation added to the intrigue of a game late. You, you take a lot of pressure off people and a lot of, a lot of uh, strategy out of the game when you give a player an automatic two, two free throws. English makes one out of two. He shoots him at 66%, and it's a seven-point Charlotte lead. Tom Mees, along with Greg Kelter, on the campus of the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Sunbelt Conference team facing the number 10 team in the country, East Tennessee, Rashard Thompson. No good. Rebound up and in. Nice job by Dan Bannister. There's another youngster on this Charlotte team, Bannister. Actually, he's not a youngster. He's a senior from Minneapolis, but he doesn't get that much playing time. UNC Charlotte absolutely lives for the second shot. As I mentioned before, 20 offensive rebounds a game. Of course, when you only shoot 41% as a team, there are plenty of opportunities for offensive rebounds. Traveling is the call on Calvin Telford as he made his move. And Charlotte's got a chance, Greg, to go up with five minutes to go in the half. They got a chance to go up by double figures. This is a big possession for them. I look for them to work, come down, exercise patience. As you look at the turnovers, I mean, East Tennessee State, they only average about 13 turnovers a game, but they're going against a team that forces 23 a game. Right now, the force is working for Charlotte. 
Loose ball, the trigger. Terrell has it, three-point line. You can just tell he wants to shoot. Oh, he wants to. bad. <laughs> Jennings knocks it out of bounds. You know, Alan LaForge, the East Tennessee State coach, told us he was very worried about the turnover factor tonight. Well, he has a reason to be because it's coming into play big time right now. He brought to our attention the amount of turnovers per game that Charlotte has forced throughout the Sun Belt season and against teams like Duke and Syracuse as well. You know, right now, East Tennessee State is knocking a lot of balls loose, but they're not quick to retrieve. That's something that will need to improve if they're to get back into this game, at least in this half. Major gear with a major contribution, hopefully, but off the rim and not being able to hang on again is Rodney England. Those are the type of turnovers that you really hate because that's unforced. I mean, English is just on the side and uh, bounces it off his foot. He really has not been able to get on track since he came in off the bench. You got to be careful when you're on the road in front of a maniacal crowd like this that if you fall down, I think the tendency is to try and get it back all at once. You can't do that. And not do it. Have to be patient. You have to be. This is a team, though, we must caution. East Tennessee State, they've been down before. Oh, yeah. And they're used to uh, playing in front of hostile crowds and handling the pressure. Broadhurst, post-up move, doesn't go. Good defense. Bannister tries for the rebound, but Jennings comes out of the crowd. He stripped him and saved two points for East Tennessee State. Gear with a drive in the lane, in and out and in again. Major Gear with a hoop, and it's 33 to 26. One thing's for sure, both teams will be below their season's average in scoring. Dotton with a post-up for a good job. Well, that was just sheer strength that time by Dotton. I tell you, he's getting great post position. They're going to have to do a better job of fighting him for that down low position. He gets it that low and is able to turn. It's going to be very tough for any defender. Talford looking for Jennings down the lane, but Mister couldn't handle it. But English can. Nice pass that time for State by Marty Story. You know, if you're Alan LaForce, you're glad to see English get that dunk because he's been struggling. You're hopeful now that something like that can maybe get him going and, and turn him on. Gear stripped the ball away, started to scramble for it, and it goes off of Charlotte. It goes off for Sean Thompson. It'll be East Tennessee State ball. So the Buccaneers trying to mount a comeback. We've got timeout with 3.07 to go, first half. Charlotte leads it by seven at the line ship. Tom Mees and Greg Kelser in Charlotte. There's our story as Midnight Madness continues and the underdog home team, the 49ers, looking for an upset. And play like this from both teams has been typical. A lot of hustle tonight. Yes, and I can't remember a game where so many players have hit the floor and have been willing to give up the body for the team this early. I mean, that's happened a lot tonight. There you see the bench points tonight. Charlotte with 14 off of their bench, led by Duvall, six. English and Pelfrey each have four as most of the total of 10 for East Tennessee State. Three minutes and counting. Charlotte leading East Tennessee State 35-28. Into the game for the Buccaneers is Trezell Silvers, his first appearance of the night, number 21. Now watch Jennings out front. I mean, when you have a player who can shoot the three like him, you've got to get him shots, although Talford knocks that down, but you've got to get Jennings some shots. And as I said before, you may need to run some screens, run him off some screens with the basketball. And Charlotte comes back and travels, and so East Tennessee State all of a sudden, a moment ago down by nine, now down by four, and with the ball. They're explosive like that. UNC Charlotte tried to run as they said they would, but that time traveling took the ball away, and Mr. Jennings slows it down for the Buccaneers. Well, if he had his shooting eye on tonight, State would probably have a pretty good lead. Well, he may have it on. We don't know. He's just being guarded so tightly, he hasn't had many shots. Uh, at this point, I think he's attempted three shots. Is that all? I thought he had a few more than that. We'll have to check. Talford is open. He'll take it. In and out and dot the rebound. Long pass to Broadhurst. He's got it. Cedric Broadhurst. You know, he's a player, an enigma for the coaching staff of UNC Charlotte. Started the season very well. In fact, he had 26 points against Syracuse. But at that, after that, lost his confidence and has not played well. Marty Story pulls up a little bit out of control. The shot was way off, and Dotton starts the fast break. This is Williams. He's got it, but he's underneath, and he's going to get called for the traveling. 
Tell you what, Williams has been out on the break numerous times in this game. Has not come away with a lot of positive results, however. Lenny Words, veteran ACC official, made that call. Will not be intimidated by a home crowd, even though they're about two feet away from him. And you see the ball boys wiping up the floor. We mentioned that the floor was slippery. They just waxed it this morning. They said they didn't want all the dust to be seen on national TV. <laughs> I said, well, listen, when you go in a mine shaft, you usually have dust around. You shouldn't be embarrassed about that. Well, you know, looking at the turnovers there, East Tennessee State, nine, they've been on nine for some time, so they're doing a better good job, better, uh, a much better job of handling the basketball. You know, they they were really conscious of that we were coming to town because not only did they sweep the floor, they, they spruced up the back doors. There was a man in here shining them up yep. earlier. Absolutely. Wanted to look good for ESPN's date here at the mine shaft. Mr. Jennings is open from about oh, two feet inside the three-point arc and it's 37-33. Buccaneers within four again. Their quality starting to show as Jennings takes it away. Oh, he's all over the place with a quick hand. He could be a magician. Yes, he probably is. I know many that have seen him play as he is with the basketball and on the court. Holy closely guarding English. Brown wanted a five-second turnover, didn't get it. But he's really having to work too hard now to get his own offense off. And as I said, you really need to have his scoring ability in the game right now. It's being taken away by UNC Sharp. Silver shot no good. Johnson almost had it taken away. Williams drives to the hole again. He really wants it tonight. Waters picks it up. He loses control. Dotton with the rebound. Oh, he hung in there. Strong with the basketball with Dotton because, I mean, he had a lot of players in the blue jersey slapping at his arms, at his wrist, but he was able to get it up and in. 39 to 33. We're in 22 seconds away from the end of the first half, and they love it here in Charlotte. No shot clock, so East Tennessee can go for the last shot. And a reach-in foul. They might nail Williams or Johnson. They could call either one of them. Jennings should go to the foul line here. I believe it's going to be 33, number three, uh, Dutton will get called for the foul. You know, when you look at the success of East Tennessee State on the year, you really have to be impressed with the job they've been able to do because consider one of their top players from last year and years beyond was Greg Dennis. And he's missed the entire season, saved two games with a, a foot injury, and he's on the bench over there. You've really got to feel bad for him because he's a big player who really benefited from playing with Jennings. Jennings made him better, and Jennings will not be there when he comes back next year. Henry Williams takes a seat. It was he who was guilty of the foul, said the official, and Jennings goes to the line for two shots. Whoa, and he misses. He's an 88% foul shooter, too. Leads the nation in three-point shooting at almost 65%. Almost 90% from the line. One out of two. And a five-point Charlotte lead. 14 seconds now to get off the shot. And we're down to 10. And you'll listen to the crowd count it down. And some nice defense from East Tennessee State. Foley had to put it up. East Tennessee State blocks it. And at halftime, UNC Charlotte goes in with a five-point lead. The sellout crowd here at the Mine Shaft is celebrating, but will they have something to celebrate at the end of the game? We're going to have a heck of a second half, and stay with us. We've got an excellent feature at halftime and lots of stats for you. We'll be back in a moment. Up by five over East Tennessee State. We take a quick look at the stats. Not much to choose, really, in shooting percentage, free throws and whatnot. Three-pointers haven't been that big a deal either. Absolutely. The biggest stat there is the rebounding, yeah. where UNCC enjoys an eight, an eight rebound edge. Here's the scoring. Pretty balanced for East Tennessee State. Gear nine, Jennings seven, Talford six. And Williams and, uh, is leading the way for UNCC. Dotton and Lang with six each. And UNCC will inbound to start the second half. And here we go. Boley, the center. Gets it into play. This is Brashawn Thompson. Now this is Henry Williams. Pointing you with the numbers here to start the second half. Thompson number 20. Lang is open underneath. Puts it up and draws the foul. You know, Lang, like Dotton, is able to get good post position down low. And when the East Tennessee State player gambles 
on the entry pass, if he doesn't come away with the steal, then it's just a simple turn and lay up or dunk for both Lang or Dotton if no help comes in. I tell you, Lang started the first half by going to the free throw line. He started the second half in the same fashion. Lang with two shots, which is the first. Giselle Silvers guilty of the foul. Jarvis Lang, what a freshman he's turned out to be, leads the NCAA in points and rebounds per game. This is both free throws, though. Pretty good foul shooter, 72%, but well, over two that time. Here's East Tennessee, first chance for the ball. Calvin Talbert. Three point shot is off the front rim by Major Gear and Charlotte with the rebound. That shot was hurried by Gear, and it was because of the great recovery by UNC Charlotte. They told us, hey, these players, and there's a gamble that paid off for East Tennessee State. But he, they told us that every time that East Tennessee State goes in for a three point shot, we will be there to pressure, and they have tonight. Wow, Marty Story had the flying layup. He blew it, and then compounded the penalty with a foul after the missed shot. Here's Story gliding in, missed an easy layup, and of course, frustration makes him come down and commit this foul. You see that all the time when a player misses an easy layup. And you see a lot of this with East Tennessee State stealing the inbounds pass. Calvin Talbert lays it up and in. And it's a three-point basketball game, 39 to 36. Now moves up the top of the key. Thompson the long shot. Two-pointer is good. Foot was right on the line when he shot the two-pointer, but good shot, good concentration. Had plenty of time to line it up that time. Lead is five for Charlotte as it was at halftime. Talbert against Lang. Boy, Talbert had the position, but the rebound. Nice job in there by Darrell, Darrell Jones. Thompson blows by everybody and then catches Lang by surprise with a pass. And who's basketball? It will belong to Charlotte. Tell you, East Tennessee State has to do a better job of limiting UNC Charlotte to one shot. I mean, though UNC Charlotte did not come down with the offensive rebound that time, they still maintain possession on the out of bounds. And again, this is a team that really goes to the offensive glass hard. Williams slipped on the baseline. That may have thrown his shot off a little bit. Ball out of bounds. It'll belong to East Tennessee. The Buccaneers rated 10th in the country, an imposing 22 and 3 record. There's the floor, slippery, certainly affecting the drive that time of Williams and probably the shot. Everybody doing a little slipping and sliding tonight. Mr. Jennings down the lane, goes right at Foley and gets the layup. Or does he? No, they're going to call Jennings for the foul. Couldn't see the official there, he's blocked out. But there on that play, you get to see the value of a guy like Jack Bowley. Here he is. He's already stationed himself. Gets the offensive foul from Jennings. Took a nice knock, too. You know, Jennings, so short, is no real, real light guy. He's, you know, he's, he's built well. But Greg, 5'7 into 6'10. How can you do that? <laughs> well, <laughs> you got it done that time. Lang with a layup. Nice body control that time by Charlotte's Jarvis Lang. I thought East Tennessee did a good job against Lang in the first half, but you can't be low to sleep thinking he's out of the game. Major gear with a major shot, a three-pointer. And it's a two-point Carolina lead. Carolina Charlotte, I should say. You know by several names, UNCC, Williams, Hanson, Franklin. Just like when East Tennessee State gambles on the post entry, that time gambling on that entry pass to Williams, if you don't come up with the steal, hey, it's an easy two points for a shooter as prolific as Williams. I'll tell you, we're getting a lot of up-tempo play now, a lot faster up and down the court than we did throughout most of the first half. Much to Jeff Mullins liking anyway. Yes. That's the way Charlotte wanted to play this game. A foul on the shot attempt by East Tennessee State, and Mr. Jennings will go to the foul line for two. You know, I think if you're East Tennessee State, You've got to play a little more honestly defensively. I mean, I think as a team, they have a pretty good defensive concept. But when they gamble out on the wing on passes and they don't come up with the steals, as I said before, it leaves an open shot for UNC Charlotte's players. He, Mr. Jennings hits the first. All right, why do they call him Mr. Well, he's six years old. He and his dad were at a 
Little League football draft. His dad wanted him to leave. He wasn't listening, and his dad said, Mister, get your butt over here. <laughs> and the name stuck ever since. It stuck, and that's exactly what everyone refers to him. Mister, he's a finalist, or should I say a leading candidate for the Naismith Award, which yearly goes to the best player in the country under six feet tall. And more tenacity by the 49ers on the offensive glass. That time the ball, and the third time is the charm. UNCC up by five, maintaining their halftime advantage. We played three minutes here in the second half. This would be a major upset. A lot of upsets on the road aren't. This one would be. And putting the shot up and in is Marty Story, and he draws the foul for State. Dutton Gilly of the infraction that time. That was a much needed basket, and it almost falls right in line with what, what the uh, East Tennessee State team was telling me today. They said, hey, Story is a garbage man, but almost right after saying that, they said, hey, he'll give you a key basket just when you need it, and he came through big time that time. Three-point play, and it's East Tennessee State back within two. Actually, it was John Cathy there, SID, who told me that. Williams from the baseline. Williams gets the rebound. Misses again. The ball. There's another third time at the offensive glass. They're getting not only second shots, but they're getting third and fourth shots right now, UNC Charlotte. And if that continues, believe me, East Tennessee State cannot win this game. Story down the line. He's starting to turn it on a bit. Beautiful move. Two baskets when they need him, and there's another steal by Mister. Mr. Jennings may not have an assist in the game, but he's got a few picks, and here's Story. He's lighting it up, and East Tennessee State is back in the lead by one. Well, he must have heard you because he just picked up an assist. <laughs> you cannot go to sleep or be tentative with the basketball when Mr. Jennings is in the vicinity. The Buccaneers have really shown a lot of fortitude. At one time in the first half, they were down by nine on the road, and Williams tries to put him down again, doesn't do it. The rebound, Darrell Jones. That's the first clean defensive rebound that we've seen East Tennessee State garner in this half. And Mr. Jennings takes advantage of his quickness as he draws the foul. I believe it's on Dutton. No, it's on number 24, Delano Johnson. And making his first appearance for the 49ers, Benny Moss, 6'8 sophomore guard. He'll come into the game. And Williams will sit down. And we have a timeout. 1547 left in the second half. East Tennessee State back on top by one. Yeah, eight consecutive points. And it looks like East Tennessee State is starting to hit strike. They're much more comfortable in their offensive set. That may have been a good timeout for UNC Charlotte. And you see State starting to warm up from three-point land as I say that. Calford launched a missile and he was he was fouled. He'll go to the line for two. It's a fourth team foul on Charlotte. The Buccaneers have three team fouls. You know, we've talked about Calford's prowess in other sports. You know, he's already signed a minor league contract with the Philadelphia Phillies. That tells you how good a baseball player he is. Well, I, I hope he does very well for the Phillies because that's my favorite team, but we'll get into that again. <laughs> I wish this young man a lot of luck. <laughs> Phillies could use it. Yes. <laughs> I, I knew you. See, I set you up perfectly. I laid a curveball and you knocked it out of the park. But Talford is not concerned with baseball now. His two foul shots give the Buccaneers a three-point lead. Delano Johnson to Lang, and Lang missed the layup. He gets the rebound and draws the foul. Nice effort by Mr. Lang. Lang is very good at following his own miss. I mean, when he puts the shot up, you see there's the drop-off by Johnson. Lang goes in. you got to block him out. When he shoots the basketball, your job is not over. You've got to put a body on Lang. You know, they say that of his 10 rebounds per game, five are on the offensive glass, and they feel that he works harder off the offensive glass than he does the defensive glass. They wish that he had equal effort on both ends, but of course, when you, you know, there, there's, there's a gift at the end of a successful offensive rebound, two points usually. Absolutely. <laughs> Nine points tonight for Lang, seven rebounds in the game, and goes one for two from the line. So it's a two-point lead for the favored Buccaneers of East Tennessee State. Steal by Delano Johnson, showing some quickness that time, taken away from Mr. Jennings. He starts the break. Underneath to Lang. Lang up. Nice pass that time by a man who just came into the game, Benny Moss. 
Danny Moss is a player who has been slow to recover from a preseason ankle injury. But he's in the game because of his outside shooting ability. You'll see Johnson rushing the ball up the court. He gets it over to Moss, who fakes the shot, gets a nice pass down low for the impressive finish by Lang. And yes, he is at the line again. And as I, again, I want to point out, Benny Moss made that play possible with the pass. Lang put it home, and that puts Charlotte back on top by one. As English comes back for East Tennessee State, and sitting down will be number 31, Darrell Jones. This is going to be a hammer and tongue affair, I think, Mr. Kelsey, to the final buzzer. I love it. Great game. Oh, it's fantastic. And the atmosphere, hey, you got to love that, too. No matter who you're rooting for, this is just a great atmosphere. Wow, Moss forces the steal. We have a two on none and missed the line. Showtime. Oh, he missed the dunk. Wow. And now they'll come the other way. And here's Jennings. He'll lay it in. That could be a turning point in this game. You better believe it. I think that that time Lang tried to throw it down just a little bit too hard. And he didn't concentrate and hit the back iron. Had he thrown it down, the roof might have blown off this building with the noise. The ball, tough shot. Rebound is fought for and a whistle underneath, and I believe they're going to have Moss for a foul for Charlotte. I'll tell you, you know, a slam dunk is a double-edged sword sometimes. You know, you mentioned that today. I, <laughs> I remember you yep. saying that coaches sometimes wish the players would just go in and lay it off the glass. Classic example. Well, that was a two-on-none. And, of course, you you know, it's, it's showtime. It's national TV. I know what's going through the young man's mind. But I remember coaches telling me many times over the year, lay it in. Lay it in. You'll get, get just as loud a cheer. And the two points counts just the same. Yes. But that's hindsight. Helfrey in the game handled the ball now for East Tennessee State. He is guarded closely by Dotton, and Dotton, I don't think, uh, knew the ball was loose or else he'd have had a steal. Dotton made Pelfrey pick his dribble up, and he's in trouble, but he's out. Jennings might have gotten away with a hop there, gets the pass outside, no good. English with a rebound. East Tennessee State finally showing some tenacity off the offensive glass. Charlotte had been doing a good job of keeping them to one shot in this game. Williams and English fighting for the rebound. It's off Williams' hand, and he's Tennessee State now with a chance for their biggest lead. They lead by three. Chance to go up by five or six. Biggest lead for Charlotte, nine in the first half. Jennings against Thompson. With it now is number 10, that's Alvin West. This is Pelfrey. You know, we talked about Jennings in our open. You know, there he is drawing fouls at 5'7". You know, it, it's, it's good for him that he's able to perform in a half-court situation because UNC that open court game has really been limited by UNC Charlotte. Charlotte's done a good job of getting back, forcing East Tennessee State to... To, to set up offensively and work a play. Well, Bashan Thompson will have to sit down. That's his fourth foul. And coming in will be Delano Johnson. So Johnson's going to get a lot of minutes now between now and the end of the game. 13.41 to go. And as I say that, a turnover on the inbound for East Tennessee. East Tennessee at times has not taken good care of the basketball today. Now we're looking at Henry Williams. He's asking for the basketball. Now he has it. You know he wants to get involved in this offense. Delano Johnson thought about shooting it. Gets it underneath the Lang. And Lang is slapped on the arm and he'll go for two. Oftentimes players are guilty of playing defense after the man they're guarding gets the basketball. But when you have a guy like Lang, who's very good at posting up underneath and drawing fouls, you better play defense on him off the ball. You better be very physical, push him out farther on the floor. I mean, once he gets it in there, it's too late. English gets called for the foul, and Lang goes to the line for two. Jarvis Lang, 72.8%. You see tonight, up until that shot, he was below 50%. Jeff Mullins, former All-American at Duke, former All-Pro with the Golden State Warriors. Here's a good one. Has that championship ring that eludes so many great players that play in the NBA. Lang gets a couple, and it's 57 to 56. He's Tennessee State leading, but by the slimmest of margin. Mr. Jennings almost lost control. 
Jennings on the right side. Three-pointer. In and out. English with a rebound and a slam dunk. Well, I tell you, when you have jumping ability like that that allows you to go up strong one time and then come down, gather, and go right back up and finish with a dunk, you're a very valuable commodity. English demonstrating his jumping ability on that play a moment ago. The officials consulting out the baseline, and the ball will be given to East Tennessee State. I'll tell you, that last time down for UNC Charlotte, Benny Moss may have delusions of grandeur. He got it out there three-point land and let it fly. Didn't even look inside. Well, you know, Benny Moss is a player who averaged 10 points a game as a freshman. And as I said, had that ankle injury and has been slow to recover. You know he's trying to get going and get involved in this season for UNC Charlotte. A oh, beautiful pass from Jennings to English. He gets the hoop and the foul on Moss. And a big potential three-point play as Tennessee State now leads by five. The no-look pass uh -oh. by Jennings to English with all that jumping ability inside. He's, uh, we talked about Lang a moment ago, having to push him out further on the floor. The same can be said about English. With that excuse me, type of jumping ability, you let him get the basket, the catch underneath. All you can do is follow him or let him go. Mr. Jennings will take a seat. He'll get a rest. And his caddy, Eric Palmer, comes in. Rodney English now with a chance to give East Tennessee State a six-point lead. Did not go on a whistle off the missed foul shot. Lane violation, I believe, is the call. So he'll get another. And boy, when you're struggling and you're behind, you hate to give your opponent a second chance on a lane violation free throw. Bannister comes in from us for UNC Charlotte. It's clear to see that East Tennessee State has settled down. I mean, they're used to the surroundings now. The crowd really is no more factor. English giving a second chance. Still can't knock it home, but Charlotte knocks it out of bounds. However, Lenny Works, the official, says it's Charlotte's ball. They got a break. Or there it was a foul. Like they're calling a foul, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, that ball did not touch anybody from East Tennessee State, but I believe Bannister was pushed out of bounds in that play. Let's take another look at it. Bannister number 10 in white. Well, it looks like the foul is going to go on Pelfrey in yeah. there. Actually, it was before Bannister's jump. That is the seventh team foul on East Tennessee State, so Bannister will shoot one and one. Both teams now with seven team fouls. No good in Talford with the rebound for East Tennessee State. Boy, he climbed the oh. ladder for that rebound. He can really sky. English for the ball for the Buccaneers. Pass to Talford is loose, but Calvin comes out to control. I'd imagine that East Tennessee State will really use press, uh, point, uh, patience right now because while they're doing this and taking time off the clock and forcing UNC Charlotte to play long seconds on the shot clock defensively, keep in mind Mr. Jennings is over there getting valuable rest time. And this is Mr. Lang, as they call him in Charlotte, Jarvis Lang, rejecting Pelfrey, shot out of bounds. Good block, but you want to try and keep those inbounds and retrieve them so that your team can get possession. They get possession on the turnover nonetheless. Calvin Talford uh, maybe had some second thoughts on his drive to the basket, lost control. Key possession here for Charlotte, down by five with the ball. Johnson gets the pick but can't get open. This is Lang, rebound Dutton. Won't go halfway down and Alvin West with the rebound. Palmer to Peltry. Pass is loose. And this is Williams. What's he going to do now? That time he was on the money. And it's a three-point East Tennessee State lead. East Tennessee State not doing a good job of buying time while Jennings is over on the sideline. I mean, there's another ill-advised shot. Jennings is up, ready to check in. But hey, why take the shot early on the shot clock? Maybe the crowd is lifting Charlotte back into this game. We're having a good time at the mine shaft. We have a good game. We'll be back with more in a moment. Williams goes in for the one-handed slam. Brings well, the house down. Yes, this is the way to do it. Right. Now we're going to show you what happened a few minutes earlier to Jarvis Lang. Oh, it's going to be so nice. They're going to love me and... Uh-oh. That is the way not to do it. <laughs> And that may have been a momentum changer at the time because East Tennessee State 
lengthened their lead with uh, Keith Mr. Jennings on the other end. Since then, Charlotte's come back within three, but that's still in the overall scheme of things. That may be a big miss slam dunk in a very close game. A four-point turnaround, yep. and the East Tennessee State lead now is three points. Back to play we go, and North Carolina Charlotte with the ball down by three. Zone defense for the first time in the game by East Tennessee State. Here's the trigger, Terrell, and it's an air ball, and Calvin Telford was there for the rebound, if you will, not really a rebound, but Aaron shot. Three-point shot by West is good, and that takes the crowd right out of the game. Wow, he was wide open, too, and that's something that East Tennessee State has not had very much of in this game, just clear, wide-open three-point shot. Delano Johnson on the drive is fouled, and they're going to nail Mr. Jennings with it. And it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's three on Keith Jennings. And uh, as we've seen a moment ago, when Palmer was in the game, they're a different team. They seem to lose a little bit of confidence when Jennings is on the bench. So three fouls, key for him. Yes, and of course, we were talking before we went to break about uh, some undisciplined shots, some unpatient shots by East Tennessee State. And Jennings is the key to keep their offense really in gear. Johnson's first foul shot brings Charlotte back within five. Jeff Mullins in his sixth year in NC Charlotte. And Delano Johnson with a couple of key foul shots. It's a four-point Buccaneer lead. Interesting that UNC Charlotte opts not to apply full-court pressure after the made free throw. They're settling back into a tough, deny the passing lane, aggressive man-to-man -man defense. And meanwhile, getting loose is Marty Story. He left Mr. Bannister there. Of course, when you play that brand of defense, really up to nine, the passing lanes, you're always susceptible to the back door. You better have help coming back that time. UNC Charlotte did an easy two points for East Tennessee State. And Story gets his hand in there again. However, Charlotte will keep control. 66-60. There's a look at Terrell. James Terrell, freshman guard. Not bashful about shooting a rock. And a timeout is called, I believe, by UNC Charlotte. Good timeout by Mullen. He realizes that this game could easily get out of reach here. They need a basket on this possession. 10-27 to go here in the second half. For the Mind Shaft in Charlotte, our score, East Tennessee State, 66. UNC Charlotte, 60. To the ceiling, and I'm not <laughs> kidding. And it's not too hard to do that here. <laughs> All right, inbounds with 10-24 to go. Charlotte with the ball. This is Henry Williams, and East Tennessee State leading by six. Lying three-pointer. Off the rim, and Story with a rebound, and Bannister over his back, ill-advised. Also, perhaps, ill-advised was the shot by Lang. I'm not sure that's what Jeff Mullins diagrammed during that timeout. You know, he says that they would love to add versatility to Lang's game. He's very strong underneath, as you've seen throughout this game. They'd love to be able to bring him out and allow him to play facing the basket, but you certainly don't want to experiment with those type of things in this type of game when it's tight. There's Story's story. He gets the one and one as that's the 18th foul in East Tennessee State now. His biggest lead at seven. Story has had a big second half and a lot to do with East Tennessee State coming back and taking this lead. Eight points now in this game. Whoever said he was a garbage man better reevaluate. Yes, absolutely. Actually, he's in double figures now. Marty Story. Williams launches the three. UNC Charlotte trying to get back with a long range attack and it doesn't work and English with a rebound. That was an NBA variety three that time by Williams. A little bit long. And the Buccaneers all of a sudden can have the first double digit lead of the night. Story's layup no good. English with a rebound. Alvin West. Oh. That hurt. East Tennessee State is in command. The Buccaneers all of a sudden up by 11. Playing with a great deal of confidence right now. Yep. And all of a sudden, Charlotte, who is so good, down low, in the blocks, on the boards, has result resorted to putting up a bunch of uh, long-range shots. Well, they've got to move the ball on the perimeter, and they've got to get some guard penetration and maybe some kickouts to Williams if they're going to get back. They're having problems adjusting to the zone defense being employed right now by East Tennessee State. Darrell the ball. Get some nice points down to the low post. Cuts the lead to nine. Mr. Jennings is open for a moment. Terrell trying to stay with him, and Terrell's whistled for a foul. I thought Terrell was doing a good job of staying with the very quick Mr. Jennings over there. 
especially when he had him in the corner because you can use the baseline and the out of bounds the side out of bounds line as an extra defender but he was cited for the foul that time so mr jennings will be on the line to shoot one and one that is the ninth team foul on charlotte from now on east tennessee state will be shooting two every time they go to the line each possession now becomes critical for unc charlotte now they've got shooters on the floor of course williams Terrell. Terrell is the point guard, so he'll need to create as opposed to looking for his own offense. But again, they need to look for some penetration, and Jennings is going out of the game right now, so a good time to take advantage of his absence. Eric Palmer comes in to spell Pete, Mr. Jennings. It's 73-62. The sellout crowd subdued for the first time all night. Move the ball on the perimeter. There's the penetration. Inside with a nice move, and the rebound is Bannister. The nice move is from James Terrell, but the result is what Melvin pointed. He gets the basket. East Tennessee State runs still in command by nine. Now we'll see if East Tennessee State elects to use the shot clock while Jennings is on the bench. Palmer's in the game directing quarterbacking. Shot clock's at 25, so there's plenty of time. No need to hurry and ill advised shot. Halper. Smooth as silk on the release. So much for what I know. <laughs> <laughs> never, never fails, does it? I'm telling you. They get me every time. Baseline, this is Darrell Duval. This is Lang. UFC Charlotte 49ers are cool enough for the field, be it long range or in tight. Has not done a good job of responding to the zone defense being used by East Tennessee. And there's that man, the ball again inside. Rodney English. Rodney English. English. Yeah. He gets his big body up there. He is 6'4 uh, and well over 200 pounds. And he got excellent position at the low post. UNC Charlotte now down at home by 13. Who likes story? English has had a sensational second half. Williams in and out from three point land. Charlotte maintains possession. You know, oftentimes, I know some of these players have to be tired. They miss these long shots not because of the release, but because their legs are tight. Can't get the leg into it. And I tell you, when you're shooting it from that far out, you do need some leg strength. And you look at how far Williams is behind that three-point line. I mean, he seems to be backing up a foot at a time to get an open shot. Well, the faithful here in Charlotte had high hopes of an upset. It doesn't look at this point like it's going to happen because East Tennessee State is really hung in there emotionally, and as the ball hits the shot, it's still an 11 point lead. I'm very impressed with the way the Buccaneers have really held the fort here under adverse circumstances and they've come back to control this game in the second half. They really have. No real time to panic, of course, if you're UNC Charlotte. There's a foul on the reach around the ball, yeah. And it'll be a two shot attempt. East Tennessee State. Yeah. As I was saying, with seven minutes to go, still a lot of time when you're at home. But again, each possession becomes big. And what UNC Charlotte has to do is make sure they get a quality shot attempt each time down. Hey, it may not go in, but make it quality. Increase your chances, at least, of getting it to drop. Rodney English gets that first free throw to drop, and the crowd is strangely silent. I didn't. I thought it was going to be a hearing aid after I left here tonight with the, with the decibel level. Well, this team right now, UNC Charlotte, can certainly use a pick-me-up from this crowd. They need some, some excitement. You know, when you talk about emotion, and yes, it does play a big part, a huge part of college basketball, they had it in the first half, but now it's not there. They need substance, does UNC Charlotte. Will they get it? Henry Williams gave him a little bit on that nice baseline move, but you're right, they're like the fighter that came out in the early rounds. They may be punched out by now. We'll see if they have any more reserve. Timeout for East Tennessee State. Six minutes, 42 seconds left. It is a 10-point Buccaneer lead, 78 to 68. Alan LaForce will huddle with his forces, and Jeff Mullins on the Charlotte sideline will be back for the remainder of tonight's game in a moment. There's our score here from the Little Mine Shaft. I tell you, it's a great little facility to generate a lot of emotion and a lot of crowd support for the home team. But East Tennessee State's boys and talent have overcome all of that. Yeah, this crowd now starting to 
try to do their part to put some energy at this late hour into their, four, their 49ers. Mr. Jennings back in the basketball game. 15 seconds on the shot clock. And reaching in is Williams, and he'll be called for foul. And of course, this is really costly now because they're beyond the 10 foul mark. And we're going to spend a lot of time, I think, in the strike between now and the end of the game. I think you're right. Jeff Mullins and his staff looking on. You see Mullins, who is aged gracefully on that Carolina bench, is now on the force. Think, think about something. The two shots, the automatic two shots, is supposed to speed the game up. But it was actually faster the other way yeah. with the one and one. Hey, you missed the first. Back in the action. The clock's running. Yep. <laughs> I, I think this is a rule who is uh, on the endangered species list. Should be. Yep. West makes both of them, though, and you won't find out on the course complaining about it now. He's up by a dozen. Sean Thompson, haven't heard much from him since the opening moments of the game. Well, he's had his work cut out guarding the very tough Mr. Jennings, yeah. and I'm sure it has affected his, affected his offensive output, having to concentrate so much defensively. Six minutes even as the ball launches the jumper and slammed down. Are they going to count again? Oh, my. How? He Line. got up so high and avoided going over the bat that time. I mean, that ball looked like it was almost in the cylinder, but he got just enough on it to push it down. Nice flush. By Jarvis Lang, and it's a 10-point game again. Jennings doing a masterful job of running some time off the clock. And, and the clock is their ally now, and they want to keep it going. They want to force UNC Charlotte to have to foul. Good, good place to have the ball right there if you're Lang. I mean, if you're uh, East Tennessee State, that's in Mr. Jennings' hands. Talford draws the foul and doesn't get the roll. I'll tell you, a good point about the clock. Charlotte is not East Tennessee State's opponent now. The clock is there. That's right. And that time, they took 34 seconds off the shot clock. Shot it at 11. And I look for East Tennessee State to do that each time down. Interesting that they don't put anybody on the free throw line in these two-shot situations. Now, we used to do that when I was in school at Michigan State, but the only reason we did it is because we felt like, hey, with two shots and a 75-plus shooter on the line, chances are, hey, he'll make the two, so we go down and get a rest. I wonder why they do it. Alfred makes them both. That's not unusual. He shoots 76% from the line, and the Buccaneers maintain their double-digit advantage at 12. Trying to go 24 and 3. There's that man, Mr. Wow. Jennings, again with a clean steal. He's ahead of the pack, and it's batted away, but he gets his home loose ball and puts it in. Boy, the diminutive guy, so valuable to his team. Rashawn Thompson, three-pointer, no good. DeVault played a nice game tonight with a rebound. Out of bounds to East Tennessee State. And you can really see the inexperience starting to show by this young UNC Charlotte team. As you said, they'll grow from this, but man, the growing pains. Oh, Cedric Broadhurst comes in. Dotton will sit down. Yeah, I'll tell you, I saw UNC Charlotte at the Carrier Classic earlier in the year. They fell down by about 20-some points to Florida. Came back to win the game at the Carrier Dome. Played Syracuse the next night. Played respectively in losing. But you could see that they were a raw team. You know, a lot of youth on this team, when they play well, they play very well. But when they don't, they don't. Well, you've got to be excited about guys like Lang and and Johnson on this team, certainly Williams. So they will be heard from. Still a lot of time in this game, four minutes, 28 seconds. And driving the baseline and drawing the foul is Lang. He was going up for a monster slam, and it was slammed back in his face by Calvin Talbert. He'll take the foul on that play. Watch the leaping ability of Talbert here. I mean, he comes over and punches this ball out of bounds. Oh. Woo Get that stuff out of here. Right now. Oh, man. Look how high he's got, and he didn't have much of a running, running jump there either. I believe his head was right there by the rim. You love to play defense against guys like that, do you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> he can jump that high. He, he probably would have given me problems. Better, better try the pump fake next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, every foul shot's so important for Charlotte Lang missing it. Look, Look at that head. Wow. I don't even 
think I could have got over him on that. Forget it. And you're, you're a pretty tall drink of water, too. I... And I know I can't now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were slamming today. Line goes one for two. However, you were uncontested. There you go. Keith, there look, Keith. At, look at Mr. Jennings shred the field. Oh, that, even though that resulted in a turnover, what a great play by Jennings in the bullet pass. Got to have your hands ready when you're yeah. on the floor with a guy like Jennings. Of course, if you're out on the force, you wish now that maybe he pulled it out, but they'll get it right back on the travel. Waters on the travel. That last time down the court for East Tennessee State, Talford, I don't think, was expecting a pass. What a great play, though, by Jennings. He's so quick, and he always has his head up. He's really turning it on for the national audience here in the second half. Yes, sir. One on two. That time they forced the turnover. I wonder why Charlotte didn't go to this pressure defense earlier in the second half. Well, they went away from it right around the time they were about that they, they were falling into this hole. Uh, it's something that they certainly are going to have to maintain and take some gambles, some chances here on out if they to break this 13-point lead down and give themselves a chance to steal this game in the end. I think Charlotte was tired, and that's why they sort of fell back a little could, bit. Could be, could be a good point. Bannister and Broadhurst fighting for it off the hands of Broadhurst. So East Tennessee State gets it back, and the Buccaneers up by 13 and cruising. They're really hurting themselves with the turnovers in the late going now. Eric Palmer in the backcourt now with Jennings. Marty Story. Jennings will run some time off. Kicks it back out. Well, they got two very good ball handlers in the game right now, and Jennings and Palmer. 5-7 and 5-6, respectively. It's harder to steal the ball from a little guy like that. Well, they're so close to the ball, to the ground on the dribble, number one, and there's the drop off. Oh, what a pass by Jennings, even though Story didn't make the shot. <laughs> you he have to that clock down, though. Yes, he did, and Johnson driving down the floor is fouled by Story, and he'll go for one and one. Not a good foul that time by Story because, again, you don't want the clock to stop. And you certainly don't want it to stop by a foul on your own team when you're leading. Well, it's going to take some uh, foul shooting, some long-range shooting to get UNC Charlotte back in this game, though, Greg. It's uh, only 3.28 to go, and the home team is down by 13 as Pelfrey checks in for the Buccaneers. He'll get Story, who... As you said, there's been some story here in the second half. A big part of the reason why East Tennessee State was able to overcome the five-point halftime deficit and enjoy this 13-point lead right now. That's an 18-point swing. Yes. Delano Johnson on the line after tonight's game. The Buccaneers of East Tennessee State will go back home. I believe they have a Southern Conference game Monday night against VMI, and then they'll take five days off, which will seem like a year to them after the schedule they've been on. <laughs> You're right. It's their 11th, uh, counting Monday night's game. They'll have played 11 games in 23 nights. That's almost like an NBA schedule. Almost. It is. Yes. <laughs> Second shot. No good, and Talford controls the rebound. Stayed up by 12, and Jennings getting it to Talford. Knocked out of bounds by Broadhurst. Well, it's gamble time defensively for Charlotte. They've got to take some chances. They cannot allow each time down for East Tennessee State to take as much time as they are off this clock. The shot clock now under 15. They got, they got to start fouling early, and that's early, uh, early recourse. And hope for misses, you're right. Oh, that hurt. Oh, that's the final nail in the coffin. Is if, it, if it weren't in already, it is now. It's a 15 point East Tennessee State lead, 87 to 72. Got to shoot it. Williams, a good guy to get it to, yeah. too. Gets the three right back, but times are wasted here. East Tennessee State falling asleep, not guarding Williams that time. They made him pay to UNC Charlotte. Got to continue to look to him. Talford just kicking it back out. You can see Alan LaForce saying, slow it down, guys, slow it down. Mr. Jennings doesn't slow it down. He takes it right to the hoop. Well, he, he, he made a good decision that time. The opening was there. He took the two. If someone had came over to help out, he probably would have kicked it back out, and they would have still be working time off the clock. He's a smart, smart player. 
Timeout for Jeff Mullins and the 49ers of UNC Charlotte. They try and figure out what to do here. With two minutes and 12 seconds left, the Buccaneers from Johnson City are about to lock it up. They lead it by 14. Tennessee State leading by 14. UNC Charlotte with two minutes and 10 seconds to try and close the gap. Thompson. And English the rebound. Everything sort of fell into place for East Tennessee State. Even the rebounding defensively and limiting UNC to one shot, that's coming into play right now. They corrected a lot of things that they were doing wrong on the run, and that's the sign of a good team. Henry Williams fouling Keith Mr. Jennings. Jennings will go to the line for two. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Associate Athletic Director at UNC Charlotte, Mark Colon, and the Sports Information Director, John Cathy from East Tennessee State University for their invaluable help, as well as Coach Jeff Mullins of Charlotte. Coach Allen, of course, of East Tennessee State. Cooperation down here, Greg, for you and I has been tremendous. tremendous yeah. Thanks, guys. I'll tell you, you don't get a chance to see a team a lot during the regular season. You need all the help you can get. And uh, they really roll out the red carpet for us. And Mr. Jennings has been scintillating in this second half. <laughs> Can't keep a good man down. I mean, uh -uh. You can say the same thing about Lang. I mean, Lang had a subpar first half, came up big, and there he is again, coming up big here in the second half. Jennings has been great. You know what I like about Lang, though, in particular, that last play? His team is he's not going to win the game. They're hopelessly out of it. Shot is missed. He's pounding the offensive glass, and like it was a one-point game, he's not giving up. Still giving the effort. Like I said, you got to be excited about him. He's going to be around for three more years, and he's only going to get better. And even though UNC Charlotte is five and five in the Sun Belt, they dropped their first three conference games, so they're five and two, and they're getting stronger in their conference and are a threat in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. And East Tennessee State, of course, will be heavily favored along with Tennessee Chattanooga and Furman in the Southern Conference Tournament. I believe that's going to be played at UNC Asheville this year. Well, you mentioned UNC Asheville. They were the last team to win a game on this floor, and it happened eight years ago. <laughs> and it looks like East Tennessee State is going to pull the trick tonight. Yes. Well, we mentioned at the start, even though 92% of the games have been won by Charlotte on this floor, this was by far the most talented team to come into this building. Pressure defense still being employed by UNC Charlotte. They're having to gamble and they're taking chances. Their only hope now is that maybe they can get some misses. I think this game is out of reach for them. Of course, if you're Jeff Mullins, you still want to see effort. You still want to see uh, execution. And hopefully those things, those habits will carry over to the next game. They won't win this game, but you still want to finish strong. You don't want to see it turn into a farce. They played well for three quarters. Yep, they sure did. Alvin West has played well coming off the bench, especially here in the second half. And he gets the roll on two for two. And, you know, we were wrong. We didn't think that East Tennessee State would reach their average. They're at 93 points and counting. And interesting that, well, that dunk changes it, but the 76 points that they had before that dunk is exactly what UNC, uh, excuse, excuse me, East Tennessee State gives up on the year. So everything is sort of went just as... Uh, the statistics suggest yep. that they would. It just goes to show you why you can't always judge a game by the halftime score and the emotion or everything. You know, as well as Charlotte played the first half, but as much as they had the crowd and the emotion behind them, Jennings didn't have an assist, and his team was still only down by five at halftime. That told you something. That should have told you something. You're absolutely right. West missing his first free throw of the night. And Coach LaForce is motioning to his defense. Just to hang back there. No unnecessary fouling. Just a minute to go in the game now. Williams got to fire it. Still got a pretty shot, even though he's dog tired. You know, a lot of his shots from our vantage point have looked good from the, from the moment they uh, left his hand. But they all seem to get a little bit of the rim and come out. It's been a tough night for Williams. English with a drive, it's open, and he slams it down. Nice power move by Rodney English. Oh, English. Between he and Talford, they should have a, a jumping contest at the end of the year so that 
we all know who can get up the highest. Well, English is 6-4. He's a junior swing man. You got Talford at 6-4, listed as a junior forward. Both of those two can sky. Well, well I'm going to go out on the limb, and it's a strong limb, too, <laughs> and say that Talford probably gets up a little bit higher because they tell me that he yeah. was an uncoached seven foot high jumper in high school. So I give my edge to him. No coaching and he jumped high jump seven. But I'm told. Wow. Rodgers missing on the front end. And let's take a look at Mr. English going strong to the hoop. There's the nice sky layout. Boom. Two points. Would have brought the house down to Johnson City. It just quieted the crowd here in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, just drove another nail in. You know something? East Tennessee State at one point down by nine is having a shot to go up by 20. As I say that, there's the turnover. Here comes Broadhurst. And Jennings causes another turnover. On a helter skelter with 15 seconds left. Let's hope Jennings isn't hurt. He took a hard spill there. No, he's fine. I tell you, you can talk a lot about Jennings and justifiably on, on all of it. But you cannot discount as he's heading out Jennings. And even some of these fans give him an appreciative hand because he's been some show. But you cannot discount the play of guys like Talford, English, Story in this game. Bannister on a second. Quickly on Jennings. Think he's got a chance to be a draft pick of the pros. Hey, right team, right place, sure. And five foot seven. Shot is in and out. Rebound, and that's the end of the game. Well, Charlotte gave it all they had, and they hung tough for about three quarters of this basketball game. And as the old saying goes, talent will out. And East Tennessee State, the Buccaneers, win it again, winning their 23rd game of the season against only three losses. The 10th-ranked Buccaneers, 96. The UNC Charlotte Niners, 80.